Good afternoon, and on behalf of the Auburn University Research Advisory Board, we are pleased to welcome you to our webinar today. The Auburn University Research Advisory Board is composed of more than 40 industry professionals from across the country who keep their eyes peeled and their ears to the ground on behalf of the Vice President for Research for Auburn University. They help identify opportunities and they work with administrators to find creative and innovative ways to support and incentivize research faculty and students. We always appreciate their assistance. Uh, today, we are lucky to have with us Tom Duvall. Tom is the Director of Auto Manufacturing Initiatives for the Samuel Gann College of Engineering. He has a bachelor from Eastern Michigan University and a master's from UA Huntsville. He is recently retired as Vice President of Manufacturing for Teledyne Continental Motors. And he has over 30 years of experience in automotive and aerospace manufacturing. Mr. Duvall also holds a Lean Six Sigma black belt. He will be talking to us today about applied manufacturing education and the Auburn Lego Lab. I'm going to turn it over to you, Tom. All right, my screen up here. Um, hello, everybody. Um, I'm going to go through our applied manufacturing uh, initiatives or education at the university. Um, what you're seeing here is just a shot of the uh, Lego manufacturing lab that we do an awful lot of training in. Um, just as an entry to the presentation. So this is what we'll be talking about, the experiential learning component, which is the LEGO manufacturing lab and the curriculum. Uh, some of the specific research projects that we've conducted in the lab, and I have some video so that I don't put you to sleep, something interesting to where you can actually see the students working in the lab, uh, uh, creating uh, some great work. Uh, senior design, and, and this is really from the perspective of industrial engineering, where we go out to companies for all of our undergraduate students and uh, implement projects using a domain structure, and we'll talk about that. Uh, faculty directed industrial projects, the webinar we gave a couple of weeks ago, you, you saw more detail about that, but we'll touch on that briefly because it's part of the experiential uh, learning component. And then we'll talk about manufacturing-focused education. We have uh, a graduate certificate, an undergraduate minor in automotive engineering. And we're planning a Lean Six Sigma engineering green belt certification. And the key term there is engineering because uh, you must have an engineering degree to earn this from offer. And also an accelerated master's that we're, we're uh, kicking around and we have a concept for, and then you'll see some of the classes that we're considering for that, which is accelerated, meaning that undergraduates can take the graduate level course and then uh, go through the master's program of manufacturing management and possibly complete within one year. And what's interesting there, what we're trying to create is the apprenticeship option as well as, as one of the components of the course. And then I'll briefly touch on the National Science Foundation Industry University Cooperative Research Center. I know that's a mouthful. And it's a manufacturing center and we were approved as a planning grant and we're working toward that. And last uh, uh, webinar we got into quite a bit of detail about that so I'll just touch on that here. And then lastly I have a slide just showing you in the industrial engineering area of engineering, the research that we conduct within that department to see what might be of interest. Okay, this is just a screenshot to just show you the students working in the lab. You can kind of see somewhat of the layout and, and the activity that we have, which is pretty exciting when you see the students doing the work. It's great. You know, they can actually put their hands on things and, and learn. This is the layout of the lab. And a uh, couple of things of interest, you see where the uh, little circles are coming up. Those are two uh, sub-assembly cells. So we're teaching sub-assembly cell work and why it is flexible for volume in a manufacturing operation and how it handles mix well and it can adapt to fluctuation. 
and those two cells feed each other, which feed a main line. And then you'll see other terms in there, pacemakers, hijunkas, supermarkets, because the design of this system is a Toyota production system. And uh, so we use all the principles, and a lot of people hear the term lean manufacturing, and that's widely accepted and understood, but essentially it's a Toyota production system that we're implementing and have implemented and that we teach our students because it's very effective and it really transformed the automotive world doing that to aerospace and now working its way into healthcare. So this is our product. Uh, it's unfortunate, the color. Yeah, we, we had hoped we could get orange and blue, but we had to take what we could get. Uh, and this is a, uh, we have an SUV that has 244 pieces. The Speedster has 277. We're planning to implement a third model of Baja. It's important to have three models in the production process because that complexity and that change creates issues that have to be overcome and our students need to understand that. The TAC rate or customer demand for our facility is 65 seconds, 830 a day or 200,000 per year. Now we don't run 200,000 per year, but we must run at that rate when we do our simulated production runs and we've got, got to meet the throughput and the quality level for that product. And spending 13 years in an assembly plant, it, it is difficult to do because a Lego, and, and you'll see this in the video, I've got a brief video, it's difficult to build at rate, and I'll explain why. Uh, again, three cells, five workstations per cell, two U-shaped, one straight line. They're, they're different, and there's a reason for that. We do three production runs per semester in the lean manufacturing class. We do a mass production run, which is old style, which a lot of manufacturers uh, still in the state of Alabama and everywhere throughout the country really operate under a mass production system, primarily all of them, most of them. Then we implement lean system methods and tools, and we run another production run about midway through the semester, and finally we use Kaizen or continuous improvement so that the students understand how very important it is for them to interface with the people doing the work that have the knowledge in the organization about why things aren't working. And ideally, when we set this lab up, we're hoping to see some improvement on each phase, which we have. A little risky because we're preaching this, and then we actually do the run, and we're very, very happy to see significant improvement at each phase, but I'll show you the data on that. So the equipment systems we have, we have vision inspection, robotics, PLC training stations. We've got 12 of those, uh, and we conduct that training. We have some level of RFID that we've experimented with, and you'll see that in one of the uh, student projects. And we have an auto storage and retrieval system that we haven't had up and functioning, actually feeding the system yet, which we're working to do. It's got 4,000 square feet. We've had up to a million dollars of equipment donation, primarily from the old Chrysler Electronics, or it was Continental when it actually closed down. So a lot of equipment we had donated to us out of that facility. Uh, we have a conference room, two offices, process training lab, and electronics testing lab in this particular facility. So if you look at the curriculum in the industrial engineering area, these are courses that we think are very applicable. The ones in green, we have fully integrated into the operation. The ones in yellow, we have some level of integration. We obviously want to bring them fully on board with the manufacturing lab, and uh, we have a couple that we haven't done work on yet that we have to move in that direction. And now I want to talk a little bit about the lean manufacturing course. These are just graphic images showing whole systems for production. Traditional manufacturing pushes material through in large batches, and it creates waste that people do not traditionally measure in accounting and finance systems. So we teach pull manufacturing to take the hidden waste out of a facility, tools to identify that waste with value stream mapping. Again, I mentioned subassembly cells, visual factory methods, 5S, continuous improvement, all of those topics we teach. This is the lean manufacturing syllabus. And if you, let me go back, if you look over on the uh, left, you'll see we really focus on the history of lean, which is very important for people to understand what this is. Otherwise, they view it as a simple tool, and it's not a simple tool. It's a complete culture and change of doing business so that students are calibrated. We fertilize the soil. They're ready to go. Then we teach them all the techniques to design a system to pull material through and 
eliminate waste in a system. We implement those systems in the lab going into our second production run. So you see our first production run over in the lab side is at the beginning, it's a mass run. After we teach the systems and we implement in the lab, we do the second production run. Then we go through all the continuous improvement methods and we do the third production run. Now we had hoped that we have great improvement after each phase. So just a few photographs of that. This is on the left, that's a compound material pull. That's a high junk aboard, which is really controlling our mix and in our, our cadence to the customer pull rate. On the right, you see a single minute exchange of dyes. I, I've got a, uh, a video to show what they went through on that, where they're trying to be flexible to mix and how that works. And on, we have a very simple and on method of, of building quality in station and holding product in station with rules behind it. We have done some level of pokey oak. You see the fixture that says speeder. That actually, that fix, fixture is 3D printed. And we want to expand that discipline. We have a couple of 3D printers that support the lab. We want holding fixtures for all 15 stations. And we want to develop jigs out of, with using the 3D printer to solve some of the quality issues that we're seeing in station. This is very important, continuous improvement, utilizing data and utilizing the organization with responsibility and timing and status to drive problems out of a system. It's rare that you see this well done in any company. I've been to some well-known companies that really don't do that well of a job at implementing this system. There's holes in it. So this is something, it's a leadership thing as well. You, you've got to have data in the system. You've got to drive improvement. So we teach that to the students in the lab. Uh, now the next course we teach in there that's fully integrated is manufacturing processes. And you see some of the activities under manufacturing processes. Uh, we PLC, which I mentioned, robotics, soldering, uh, vision systems, and a few other you see on the list. Uh, this is really a, a, an image of our PLC training stations. We have 12 of them, thanks to Siemens. Uh, they gave us a donation of these. We assembled these units and set them up, and we now have that conducted as a course. Students are required to complete a simple programming assignment. And the purpose is not to make them technicians in factories. We have two-year schools that do a very good job of that. The purpose is so that they're manufacturing savvy managers running an operation and they understand the language and they understand the systems that make a, a company run. So they have to have enough understanding of PLC to actually do some programming and to solve some problems with it. Uh, we are planning to integrate the PL PLC conveyors and robotics between work cells by 2013. We missed that date, so we're still working on that one. Response to industry. This, this lab really was when we talked to Toyota, they were telling us that they're getting graduates coming out of four-year institutions that do not understand these disciplines. So we pursued this, and we've got the lab in place, and we're doing the training. We're still trying to get this integrated into the flow of the process. Okay, so I, I've got a few videos here so that you won't become too bored. I'll just kind of run them so you can, can see. And here we go with the robotics and vision system inspection. It's about a minute long. Okay, and um, 3D printing, you'll look in the upper left, that's a MakerBot uh, replicator. And uh, we use that for uh, many things, and we're expanding the use of it. If you look just below, 
were uh, develop the tire and rim fixture so that we could begin using our six axis small robot to assemble uh, tires and wheels and, and use the 3D printer to create the fixtures for it. And again, you saw the holding stations in the previous photo on the upper right. And lastly, in the bottom left, this particular windshield that was part of the, uh, uh, the build it was misplaced many times. And uh, the fixture on the right was produced to airproof that assembly process so that it couldn't be built wrong. So again, we're using 3D printing real time quickly to solve problems in process with uh, creatively uh, creating jigs that will prevent defects from occurring. So a uh, couple of things about the mission of the lab uh, to simulate manufacturing best practices from material receipt to product delivery thus providing students with improved knowledge of system interdependence. So if we were to focus on a specific aspect of manufacturing, no one will ever get the sense of the entire system unless we actually build a product from material coming into inventory going out the door. So you, you have a really great idea about the interdependence of all these systems and how they interact. To provide faculty the opportunity to integrate research into the lab for experiential student learning, and I love this quote from Aristotle, for the things we have to learn before we can do them, we learn by doing them. To provide a facility that incorporates multidiscipline knowledge and expertise, thus simulating a true manufacturing environment. Uh, every factory I've ever been in, I haven't seen all industrial engineers running it, so we've got a factory, we can have the engineering from mechanical or any discipline business and information technology students in the lab. We haven't fully integrated those disciplines. We've touched on it a bit, but we would like to do that. And, and, and lastly, to develop manufacturing savvy students that can make an immediate difference supporting local business, which will improve our partnership with, with industry. And one unwritten thing I don't put on the slide, ideally at some point we would like to embarrass local manufacturers when they tour our lab. I think that's a great goal. They walk in and they feel bad about the great things they see that they may not be doing. So we're really striving to improve the way we operate within that lab and to show the best practices. So planned enhancements of the lab, again, the integration of PLC robotics and vision between the work cells. Right now we produce and we manually through pull move material from one station, one work cell to another work cell to the straight line. What we'd really like to have is conveyor coming out, robot picks up the part, does the vision inspection, passes a good or bad conveyor, feeding the next operation, and have that link between the three cells and the students programming those systems so that we really have all the elements of a manufacturing operation fully integrated. We want to use the 3D printing methodology, again, for more airproofing, to, to expand the use of the holding fixtures, and to learn other things that we could use this technology for that could be unique and special that a lot of manufacturers may not be aware of. Uh, we have one station where we have video-based work instructions. We'd like to expand that to all 15 workstations. Uh, again, we want to integrate the auto storage and retrieval system that we uh, have in the, in the plant. Uh, we would like to also install a moving conveyor for the straight line segment. We have the manual work cells and we can teach the strategy of work cells and how they're flexible. But we'd like the product to go to a moving conveyor for the straight line. If we can do that, then we have all the problems that come with a moving conveyor and, and how we have to balance the line around it and the problems that go with it. And then we would like to at least create a model ergonomic workstation, for example, because we have a very strong safety and ergonomics program in the industrial engineering area. Okay, so summarizing all of that, we, we, should, we had this video last webinar. I'm not sure who might have seen it before, but this is a two-minute video that really just shows the students working in the lab on their mass production run. All right, we're getting ready to start it, and uh, I want to make sure that everybody in that position, cell one, cell two, cell three, ready to go. Okay, the tag rate, remember what we said the tag rate was? When we look at what the annual demand is, that equates to a car every 60 seconds, so therefore we're, we're running 20 minutes. We want 20 cars out of each cell. Good luck with that. And we want them to be perfect, and by the way, that's going to be difficult. This is a Lego car, so you don't have your 
analysis was different. And uh, we will measure the results. So we have a count of three. You can go ahead and begin. One, two, three, go. Legos, in, in my opinion, and I've worked 13 years in the manufacturing assembly plant, are harder to build and rate than a car in the assembly plant. We build a speedster and we build an SUV vehicle, and this represents both of those cars. And these are very bright students. I'm sure they would get to class on building a house. Now. I'm sure they would ace that course, take them out to the field and say, build a house, and that's something else. So I think in the case of manufacturing, it's very important for people to put their hands on and see it match it. For the people that view this, multiply that times to get an hour and time to take to get a ship and then you get a sense of what kind of control problems you can have in the car to run in an eight hour ship. Well I think you all did a fantastic job. So I had a lot of fun with those and uh, that was our first run and then we had the second and third and what I want to show you here is the data for that. We had three particular groups. We have 90 people in this class, so we have to break them up in three sections, and we have them in three cells. So on our first mass production run, you can see the results of cell one, two, and three. Cell one on the far left underperformed the other two. Cell two produced the, the best, and what you see is approximately 14, 15 vehicles produced when we did the mass production run with no lean systems implemented. We implemented the lean systems, and you see improvement from all three groups, approaching 2017, 18, and then you see a significant increase when we go to Kaizen. And when we go to Kaizen, we actually have them start logging as a team the problems that they're seeing in the work cells as they're running. And they have, they have responsibility through the graduate students as team leaders to solve those small problems that are preventing the system from flowing. And now they, at the end of the course, they have a real un, true understanding of the effect of solving small problems in the manufacturing operation and talking to the people that do the work. In this case, happens to be them. And in terms of average defects for, per production run, we had about six vehicles defective at the first run, three at the second, and one at the third. So significant improvement from production run to production run. Mass, lean system implemented, Kaizen, or continuous improvement. Now, I, I want to go through a few uh, videos. These are a little bit longer. This is a four or five minute video, and this is a single minute exchange of dyes. This is one of the most significant disciplines in the Toyota production system that, that created the environment for them to nearly put Detroit out of business. They had to figure out how to change their presses over rapidly because they couldn't afford warehouses of materials and, and whole factories of dyes. And so this discipline, which was never considered in a traditional mass environment, is what was developed by Toyota. So we created this problem for the students and this, this is what they came up with. So they have to change the fixtures over because they're going from the one vehicle to the, to the second vehicle. Uh, mass production, they would mass produce all of one all day long and then they would switch over. Lean, you should be able to build as the customer requires. Long changeovers are the obstacle.
Traditionally in mass production, they, they're not that concerned about changeover because they're rewarded for running very long production runs to greatly utilize the equipment, which creates excessive quality issues and excessive work and process inventories. And it is actually anti-Toyota production system. So when they're putting the new die on for the new vehicle, there's an inspection camera that gets set up above the die, which actually takes a picture to make sure that all the elements are in the pro proper location, which means this die has to be adjusted from edge to edge on the table in the proper location for the inspection to work, which takes some time on the alignment. This is where they're doing the alignment. They've got to make sure it's in position again for the camera, which does the inspection of the top of the vehicle. So it makes sense in a mass production run that we would run this all day before we had change over to a new vehicle. But we want to run this every two or three cycles. Uh, Smith has a very structured methodology that they follow in order to evaluate the waste in the changeover. And this is the solution they came up with. You see the holding fixture. It was uh, designed in CAD and cut in our DML lab. And the jig puts the die in the proper position for the, for the vehicle so that the camera inspection is correct. So the new changeover is five to eight seconds. Now that has a significant impact on the lead time through the manufacturing process and all the work and process inventory and the flexibility of the operation to build what the customer wants when they want it. This is how you reduce inventory in an organization. Okay, now I want to show you a uh, little work that was done. I hope we have the volume. This is three and a half minutes on vision inspection. It's another uh, team that conducted a project within the lab. Essentially, it's just showing you that this lab is becoming a sandbox for them to play in. Here's our graphical user interface. The interface has four buttons to configure that
Okay, and what I think is pretty significant about that is there's no real expense. We have MATLAB software at the university. Uh, we used a, a regular camera to create the program to do vision inspection on a product being produced. So I think that was pretty significant. It, it certainly shows how you could inexpensively create vision inspection systems in a factory with a little bit more of a robust design and station. Okay, now this particular one, I'll, I'll try to, this is a little long, I'll try to speed this up and make sure we get through it. I'll just move it along, but essentially it's an RFID methodology for Kanban 2 bin replenishment. Sorry about that. Okay, I'll, I'll move this along a bit. You can see they put a new grid system in. This is the RFID implementation. Essentially what we were doing there, we were using uh, a two-bin Kanban system for pulling material to the workstation from raw stock out of a supermarket. And these students said, wouldn't it be cool if we could use RFID to instantly send the signal if we installed the antennas in the reader in a station, we test that methodology out. So it's a, it's a great application. It has promise. And again, the, the sandbox yielded something of interest that we might be able to do. Now I want to talk about senior design, and this is focused on uh, um, 
Um, industrial engineering, all of our projects for industrial engineering are with manufacturers typically, not always. Some of them are healthcare, some other projects as well. But what we do is we conduct the DMAIC methodology, define, measure, analyze, and prove and control. That's a Six Sigma system. And we follow the Six Sigma structure for the students. Another feature that's pretty important here is 25% of their grade is based upon their leadership because each one will take a phase of the DMAIC structure that has to be graded and approved before they move to the next phase. And if the leadership role that you have, that's going to have a significant impact on your grade. That really helps the team do well, I think. Uh, we also have a peer review so that every member of the group is graded by the other member of the group. We've had great results with these projects. And you see we do a storyboard presentation at the end of the semester. This is an example of the storyboard for Lear Corporation that the students conducted a project with the Tier 1 supplier to Hyundai. Uh, so for instance, you can probably see it, but the, the fine measure, analyze, improve, and control. Of course, each one of those phases has to have a leader, and it's their job to make sure they do an effective job for the discipline of Six Sigma on that element. This is the define leader, measure, analyze, improve, and control. And this has worked very well for us, and we've done very effective projects out in industry this way with our senior design. And then we had a uh, our previous seminar. We got into far more detail about this, but these are companies that we've been working with and implementing solutions. You can see over on the far right, many of our students have either been hired or offered positions based upon the industry projects that we're conducting. We also currently offer, offer a manufacturing minor in automotive engineering and also an undergraduate certificate. You can see the courses there that are related to that. So they get focused because they have the influence of automotive manufacturing in the state of Alabama. We're looking at doing this, and we think we, have, we should be able to do this, and that is a plant lean Six Sigma Engineering Green Belt with Auburn certification. These are the courses that would have to be taken in order to achieve that, lean manufacturing. Our professional practice feeds our senior design. Those are both required, and we're kind of, we're kind of prepping senior design and professional practice. The students also take Six Sigma, and as we just saw previous, senior design uses the Six Sigma to make process for their projects. So we, we feel pretty strongly that we can do a great job of certifying Greenbelt, our students, with the Six Sigma Engineering Greenbelt certification. So in professional practice, we need to assign senior design teams, meet with the company, complete the design phase, in prep for senior design. So professional practice is in the fall, senior design is in the spring, so we'll lead into that. In Six Sigma, we're going to add an element uh, to require passage at 80% of the ASQ exam, which the world recognizes as the premier green belt certification institution, so we will require the same passage of that particular exam. And then in senior design, we do the DMAIC structured prot projects, we, each student leads a phase, and we do follow the uh, Six Sigma methodology. So this green belt certification will be unique from the ASQ in that it requires an engineering degree to achieve. Other green belts and black belts, for that matter, out in industry do not require an engineering degree. This one does. Now this is a concept for an accelerated master's, and th these are just a, a placeholders for many of the courses that we're looking at in order to do that. You'll see one of them that I think is significant is a faculty, faculty advised apprenticeship op option for the students, and we want to incorporate the mechanical engineering design and manufacturing lab as one of the core courses for this. Uh, this is the design and manufacturing lab. Lewis Payton runs the lab, does a fantastic job. And say a few things about that. It's required for all mechanical students. Uh, the goal is not to make a machinist, but to understand machining in, in a manufacturing environment. 
the project tolerances that they have to, to meet for their projects are plus or minus five thousandths. Students utilize the same machines in Texas traditional machinist education. The students are qualified to take the National Institute of Metal Working Skills, NIMS, nationwide examination for apprenticeship machinists. And Auburn produces more exam candidates every year than all other institutions in the state combined. And that's pretty significant. So the accelerated uh, manufacturing masters, uh, the benefits of it, it will provide the incentive uh, for undergraduate students to, it, it, to take the accelerated masters in manufacturing management. Uh, green belts and apprentices create effective problem solvers that will have an immediate impact in the manufacturing environment. We cultivate our capability to support on-site industry projects under the new manufacturing IUCRC, which I'll talk about quickly. We learn and improve our curriculum and student capability through continuous industry feedback regarding the performance of our students in these operations. The IUCRC, we talked about this on the previous webinar. It's a National Science Foundation Industry University Cooperative Research Center. It, uh, companies pay a membership to be part of the uh, industry-directed research. Member companies have a seat on the industry advisory board, and they grade the effectiveness of the program at biannual reviews. Uh, Auburn, Tennessee Tech, and UAH have successfully submitted a proposal to NSF with focus on vehicle manufacturing. We've won the planning grant status. The centers to be named the Southern Alliance for Advanced Vehicle Manufacturing. And the thrust areas that we've defined uh, with the multi-universities multi are manufacturing system design, technologies uh, for mass customization, lean manufacturing management, data-driven quality systems, and occupational safety and ergonomics. Each university must sign five companies to become a full center. And that's what we're working on right now. And this is kind of the map of the process of where we're at. <laughs> we expect to be a full center by early 2015. We've met with several companies already, and many have expressed interest in joining the center. Now, if I were to kind of summarize the whole thing on one slide, we have our experiential learning component, which is Lego Lab Senior Design Industry Projects. We have our manufacturing education, which is the automotive engineering certification, Lean Six Sigma Greenbelt, and manufacturing management masters. The National Science Foundation IUCRC I just spoke of is the industry university partnership that we would hope to be able to develop and grow. This, we think, is what will give us our, our, our mission and make us successful because we're developing the students, we're giving them the skills they need to be hit the floor and make a difference in manufacturing operation in the region, and we think the efforts we are conducting there to do that will yield the success. And I just threw a slide in to show you the industrial and systems engineering areas of research. And you can look at that at your leisure, but these are the kind of things that we have expertise in research in. And any questions? Well, you've already answered one um, Someone specifically asked if you had a process in place for uh, certifying the Lane Six Sigma Green Belt. Yes, we, we haven't we have not completed that yet, but there's no reason we can't do that. There, there are no standards in the world for that, where there's many, many, many different institutions that do it. And we do so many things very well over and above most of them, including the engineering degree itself, that we feel very strongly that we can do it. That's why we're adding that element of the ASQ exam passage to the Six Sigma course, because if we want to make sure if somebody says, well, how, wh why is your green belt legitimate? They do pass the same exam that they pass with the ASQ. And oh, by the way, they have an ABET accredited class in Lean Six Sigma, uh, in Lean and in Six Sigma, and they do all this applied manufacturing, and they use senior design as their project where they conduct the domain process. So we haven't went through the formal process of getting this approved. This is on the agenda for us to make happen. 
and we feel pretty strongly there's no issue there for us. We benchmarked other programs. We spoke with Ohio State University uh, that does something similar, and we, they feel pretty strongly we're well positioned to do it. Great. Uh, someone wants to know, how many times a year are the ASQ and NIMS exams offered? Uh, no, I think that I, I'm not sure of their schedule. What we we won't have them set for the ASQ exam. We will simulate that exam in our Six Sigma course. <coughs> so we won't. Uh, our students won't be required to go to the ASQ and take the exam. As a matter of fact, they cannot be green belt certified under ASQ because they have to have three or four years of experience. <laughs> but the ASQ does not require an ABET accredited class in Lean, an ABET accredited class in Six Sigma, or any of the kind of work that they're doing in the labs and the processes that they're doing. And we are doing a project in a factory. So given all the things we go over and above on, we feel very strongly that, that we will produce a better Greenbelt certification than a typical Greenbelt certification through ASQ. And that will resonate well in industry. All right. Any more questions? Okay. Okay. Well, thank you. All right. Um, let's see. So, if you're interested and you have questions about today's webinar, you may contact Tom directly, and his email is tlb. O one seven at auburn.edu, and you can uh, view the recorded webinar via the link listed below on the Research Advisory Board website at auburn.edu. And let's see, if you know of people or organizations that may have interest in this research topic, we appreciate you passing this along. I know we had a couple of technical difficulties. Uh, with hearing some of the, the videos today. So if you have questions about those or would like to see those in a format that you can hear better, you can email me and I'll make sure that you get that. Our next webinar is scheduled for August 13th and will feature the research of John Thoreau from our Department of Engineering. And the title of Dr. Thoreau's presentation will be Clinostic Cameras, the Future of Imaging. We're going to email you a short survey regarding today's presentation, and we ask that you send that back to us so that we may improve in the future. We look forward to seeing you next month. Thanks for your participation today, and thank you, Tom. You're welcome. Thank you.